What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Really excited about tonight's episode because once again, we are gonna be teaming up with our buddies, Daniel and Houston Arms from the Arms Family Homestead. And tonight we are actually going to be doing a little bit of night fishing. So our plan of attack tonight is we're gonna be taking out their bow fishing boat to a nearby lake and we're gonna be baiting up um, some pool noodle catfish lines that we brought from Arkansas and baiting them up with the sunfish that you saw us catch in the last video out of their creek. And so while we have those pool noodles and baits marinating, we are going to take their boat up to some shallow coves and actually do a little bit of bow fishing. And that has me really excited because it's something that I've honestly always wanted to try out. Um, we live on a, on a lake back in Arkansas that's pretty well known for bow fishing, um, but we just have never really had you know, the equipment to uh, do it properly. You know, We don't have the bows and we don't really have um, the boats with the bright lights and the good standing platforms to really do the boat fishing effectively. So whenever Daniel mentioned that that was something that we could go do, I was all about it. So we're really excited about tonight's episode. We hope that y'all are excited to join along with us. We're gonna start off, like I said, by baiting up some pool noodles and then jump right into the boat fishing action. So guys, if y'all are into that and excited for today's episode, do us a huge favor, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. Now let's get out there on the lake. Let's have some fun. We'll see you on the water. Here's how many catfish you gonna catch tonight. Um, I'm bonding you. A little bit. How about that, Is that better? Sort of. Um, I predict at least. Over or under five? Over five. Over five. Ooh. Jay, how many catfish you gonna catch tonight? Five. Five straight at five. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go. I'll take the under then. I don't want to take the under, but somebody has to. I'll go with four or less. Okay. But that's still a nice haul of catfish. Oh yeah. Yeah, you should. Yes, too slow on the button. Maybe not. <laughs> I couldn't see. It was. Under? Yep. You got, got him. Real baby, real! Come on, baby! He's begging. Oh gosh, dude! Oh, Look, at wow. oh, Look at that thing on guard. <laughs> Look at that, guys. That is my official first gar ever shot bow fishing. We had a little pair of them cruising the bank. He was pretty close, and that's a really thick spotted gar right there. Look at that. That was awesome. You know, I wasn't expecting to hit any of these fish, but hey, you're doing pretty good so far. I'm hoping that we'll come up again, come up across some bigger ones and maybe even a big carp because this guy was putting up a fight on the rig. Like, that is so different. Like, it's so foreign to me, but I already feel myself getting addicted. <laughs> but um, we're gonna throw this guy in the live well. Daniel's gonna be using this as some hog bait. Apparently, they make really great hog bait. So these fish are definitely not gonna be going to be going to waste tonight. Really cool. Now it's sucked in a bunch of bugs too. The bugs are just everywhere. Oh, they're bad. <laughs> but this is too much fun to worry about the bugs. So let's get him in a live one. Let's keep cruising on the banks and we get some more. Okay guys, sorry to jump in and interrupt y'all, but I just had to say really quickly that bow fishing out there was so much fun. And even though I was only able to get one fish in this video, you're gonna have to jump over to Arms Family Homestead's channel and watch their video from this night and see the rest of the fish that we got via the bow fishing rig. We got several other fish and several other attempts and it was just, it was just so much fun. It was so cool seeing all the fish swimming with the lights illuminating the water all around the boat. It was just, it was just so cool. We've got to get some sort of system set up here so we can do some of that back in Arkansas. But anyways, let's get back to the video and see what we have swimming on the end of our pool lines. I think this one had a live oh, one. he just went under the boat. He literally just went under the boat. Come on, Come on, Houston. Oh, my God. oh grab it. Got it. Got it? Yeah. Fagan? Oh, oh, my gosh. He's on there. Yeah. Holy oh crap. Oh gosh. Pull him in. Pull him in. Is it fun? Oh, 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 look at that. That's catfish. a good one. Nice yeah. channel catch. <laughs> that's awesome. Dude, that is so tight. That's like a five or six pound channel catfish, probably. As he was pulling it down, I thought he was even bigger, but that is awesome. I, I don't even have... care. This is a good one. That's a good eating size fish. Heck yeah, that's our first one we came to, also. Yeah. We haven't got another dozen out there, so surely we'll have a couple more. Like a normal person would. <laughs> and it jumped out of your hand? Yeah. Why don't you just pull the line? Yeah, pull, in pull the line, Houston. And then reel it up. Is it real big? I don't know, but there's definitely something on it somewhere. Turtle? Don't be a turtle. Oh, it's oh a gar. Oh, it's a gar. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Look at that. 
Well, here's our second fish on the jug lines. Houston had no idea we had anything on there, and then the jug got ripped out of his hand. We got all excited. I think we might have had another catfish, but it's another gar. I assume this guy is probably going to go with the other ones in the live well. Nice little spotted gar. But he's got that thing all twisted up. I don't think we had any pliers on the boat. Yeah, I brought some. We got some pliers on the boat. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so we'll probably use pliers to get that out, but we'll see. Cool fish, but not exactly what we're after. Here we go. We got another noodle with a fish. How's it feel, JJ? Oh, it's a good one. Woo! Oh my gosh. He's in the boat. He's yeah. in the boat. Oh, he's in the boat. He's in the noodle bucket. Put him in the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Nice. Yeah. Second channel cat. Third fish on the noodles. That one there's like, what, nice. four pounds? Yeah. Pristine. Yeah, it's a nice one. Healthy looking channel Ooh. cat. That's so exciting. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't want to grab that one, Houston. Yeah. What? I already got the fish. He was being nice. Oh, what a gentleman. Look. Oh, <laughs> keep him in the boat. All right, let's get him off the hook. Oh, what's this? Oh my gosh, this is big. What? Oh, he's, oh, he's tangled up in something. It's a pretty good one. He's tangled up in a stick. Look at this. Get up here. Oh, don't spin off. <laughs> oh my gosh, we got the fish in the stick. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that <laughs> might be the biggest one. You gotta just bring them all in the boat. <laughs> Goodness, that dude was all stuck. There we go, there is channel catfish number three on the night, our fourth fish on the noodles, which isn't really too bad. We put out only about a dozen, maybe 15 noodles. And uh, I think that was our last one. We felt like there was one missing, and uh, luckily we ran up on this one. This catfish was all looped up in that giant stick. And um, there's a chance there could be another one out here. I think, I, I, I seriously think that was our last noodle, but maybe we'll be surprised, but definitely a good haul, really good quality size catfish. And normally back at our place, we're catching some that are like, you know, one or two or maybe three pounds, but all these have been, you know, over five, which is really, really cool. And they're healthy looking too. They're gonna be good eating. Look at that. Oh my oh gosh. Oh my gosh, dude. Dig it, <laughs> I'll hold you, you, get, you stretch, I got you. I think it's big, Houston. Got it. Pull it easy. Oh gosh. You're fighting back? Oh, I saw him. Oh, it's another, another good catfish. Cat. You got it, Houston. That's a big one. Swing the boat, swing the boat. Oh swing the boat. Oh. Yes, sir. Heads up. That's a good one. Wow. Man. Yeah, that's definitely the biggest one of the night. Dude, what a that's what chub. We keep saying, isn't it? I know. <laughs> they keep getting bigger. That's awesome. Good fish, man. Woo! That's number four. We got a full box. Four big old channel cats. Now, how many gar? Like three gar? I think there's three gar in there. We the one that was on the line we threw away. Yeah. I mean we put him back because he wasn't really Things are too bad, so we threw him back to catch another time. And it's always good when you got more channel cats than Garden Live Well. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, way to snag that guy. You boat flip that thing. He looks like he's pull you in. Oh my gosh. How Did you get it? Bonus. Crap. I call eating those. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Bonus catch. Dessert. <laughs> One for me. One for you, <laughs> one for Daniel, one for Houston. We got legs for days. That's yeah. rare here, right? I, I'm I mean, not gonna got, say it's rare. You just can't not rare. see them. You can't get yeah. to them. That's that's probably the biggest bullfrog we've ever caught here. Biggest one we've caught this year. Yeah. <laughs> that's for dang sure. We ain't caught hardly any. We've been hearing them calling all night, and we're just like making the comment that you know this grass is it's impossible to like penetrate and like even see the frogs. But this guy slipped up. He was sitting around right the edge, and we were able to slip, get right there and. I feel like they're probably generally unpressured out here, so, I mean, he didn't even care. No, he never even flinched. Uh-uh. God, that's a big bullfrog. I mean, look at that. There's my hand. Oh, yeah. Look at the leg. It's like it goes all the way in my elbow. Nose to foot, my whole forearm. It's a big bullfrog. Oh. And that's gonna eat up really good with our catfish. And we're right at the boat ramp, like the truck. I can see the Look, boat ramp's right here. <laughs> Bonus catch, dessert. That's awesome. That's really cool. Wait, what a way to cap off the night. It's been incredible. First time bow fishing, first time running noodles out here in Oklahoma. It's just so much fun. First Oklahoma bullfrog. That's incredible. What do you think about this spread right here, Houston? 
Delicioso. Delicioso. We got some channel catfish. Pour it up a little bit. We got our frog legs. Look how big those frog legs are compared. Well, I guess the catfish has been kind of chopped into small pieces, but right there, it's just thick. So what we're doing this morning is we are, Jay and I are fixing to leave pretty soon, maybe within the next hour. But before we leave, Daniel is cooking us up some breakfast and our main ingredient is none other than the catfish fillets and the frog legs that we have. We're making catfish filleted, uh, or we're making catfish fillet biscuits. And so instead of Chick-fil-A, we're having catfish fillet and it's gonna be awesome, I think. Fried egg and fish biscuits. Yeah, and you know, we like to put like random things together and you know make these you know different concoctions. If you follow our channel for what you've seen, we make frog legs and waffles. We make all sorts of different kinds of fish sandwiches and just random stuff. But it never really crossed our mind to make a a, a catfish biscuit, which is kind of bizarre because you know biscuits are just these you know just tasty, just sweet you know buttery morsels of bread that you would just think would make the finest you know fish sandwich. So Jay's all in on it. Yeah. We're excited about it. We're gonna give it a go and we'll let you guys know how it tastes. If Houston, Hang on, on the Houston's, frog legs. Hang on. Houston's just playing with the frog legs. Yeah, yeah. You like to let the feet on them. Huh? <laughs> you like to let the feet on them, don't you? I was back here having something. I was about to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay guys, go down in the comments section, rate this catfish biscuit from one to 10. That looks spectacular. We got the fish we caught last night. That is a homegrown egg and we've got a biscuit. It's kind of crumbling apart, but that's actually the way I like it. Hey, look at mine. Dude, yours is perfect. That looks good. Yours looks way better. You're better at building a biscuit than I am. <laughs> I've never had catfish and eggs before, so this is kind of weird to me, but I bet it's gonna be good. Okay, guys, that's good. <laughs> that's really good. Oh my gosh, I'm I feel like she was kind of doubting our uh, abilities there for a second. What do you think, Cole? <laughs> I, I think she, I think she was really messed up about the egg on the fish. Yeah, the egg was. So <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, fish biscuit. That sounds great. But then you were like, put an egg on it. I was like, ooh, I don't know about that. But hey, it's good. A little messy. It is. <laughs> I wanted the egg runny. It seemed like it had to me in my mind. It had to have the egg still runny. So. That's the sauce, see? Mm-hmm. That is really good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what else is really good? For Cole to eat his frog toes. Okay, so Houston's been pretty adamant that I cannot take a bite of my catfish biscuit without taking a bite of these frog hey, toes. I didn't say that. <laughs> you, basically, that's what you've been saying all morning. You've been hounding me about, you gotta eat those frog toes, eat those frog toes. And I was like, it's probably like eating a, eating a fish tail. So we'll give it a try. Hopefully it's not like super, it's kind of bony. We'll, we'll do our best. Ooh. Here we go. Frog toes down the hatch. Oh. Very crunchy. Oh gosh. That was a lot of crunch. It's still a lot of crunch. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's gross in there. It's really not gross. It really just tastes like the batter, but I will say it's not like eating a fish tail. Like a fried fish tail. It's a little bit sharper. It's a little tough. It's a little tough. A little sharper. <laughs> I had to. I had to really power through those to those frog toes. <laughs> Are you gonna do it? No. I'm gonna go right here. Got a little egg. A little catfish. That's pretty dang good, isn't it? That's money. That is so good. Like, if nobody before us has done this, man, we need to trademark it like instantly. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, so, so good. Just give it a few weeks and there'll be, there'll be uh, fried catfish biscuits all over YouTube. I know. <laughs> Everybody's gonna have to try it. I, know, I can see it now. We could start a food truck. We can have this, you know, our main breakfast <laughs> item. Catfish biscuits, maybe frog toes, you know. <laughs> 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 but it, it's actually really, really good. and. Honestly, not that surprising. Three great food items combined into one. I'm all about it. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cole and Jay, and as you can tell, it is currently nighttime, but Jay and I are about <laughs> to go out in the lake and do some catfishing. Yes! We're gonna be running them lunch tonight. We've already got them hung up, and all we have to do is go bait them and uh, see if we can catch some catfish on them. So what we've got going on, we went to the store and picked up some bait, and the bait we're going to be using tonight is some really cool green glowing 
night crawlers. Check them out. These worms are actually <laughs> green, and so they're supposed to glow. Uh, I'm not sure if they're gonna glow in the dark or not, but we have a black light, so we can light them up with the black light and see what their glowing potential really is. But either way, they're night crawlers and they should get the job done. So we're gonna see if we can make them glow, and then we're gonna go out on the lake and see if we catch the catfish on them. You ready, guys? Let's do it. Let's go. Okay, so we got a black light out here rigged up. We got our worms. So I'm gonna turn this spotlight off. Jason, turn the black light on. And let's see if these worms glow. Ready? Ready. Okay, in three, two, one. Whoa! Wow, they work! That's awesome. <laughs> now, I don't know. Let's see if they like will hold a charge. I'm not sure if these are actually glow worms or if they have a glowing formula inside of them or if they just glow because they're, you know, injected with some green dye. So let's charge them up for about three more seconds. Okay, Jay, cut the light off and let's see if they glow. Dang. No. Dang it. What? Oh, I got gypped. Maybe I didn't get gypped, but I thought that they were glow worms and that they were going to hold the charge. I think they'll still catch fish, though. I definitely think they'll still catch <laughs> fish. Maybe the fish will see the green dye mixed in with them. But dang. Rats. Oh. My foolproof plan was not foolproof. Well, that's okay. Whatever. Let's go Let's go hang up on some limb lines and see if we catch fish on them. Okay, made it to our first line. Let's bait up our first worm. And let's see if we can catch our first catfish. These are pretty big worms. Probably gonna use like half the worm on each line. Just threading them on the hook. Looks pretty good. I'll dangle a little bit off, just maybe entice them a little bit more. That's basically the rig. We're just gonna throw it in the water. And uh, hopefully the catfish will come to it sooner than later. We got a bunch of lines just scattered out on all these trees. And we're gonna probably bait up a couple dozen of them and hopefully before the night's in, we'll have a decent amount of catfish to cook tomorrow for dinner. This is our last limb line we got a bait. Just toss that in. And we're gonna head back to the house and chill there for maybe 30, 45 minutes or so. And then come back out here and see what we got on the lines. Hopefully, we'll get some big catfish. That's the goal. Probably about five or six of them would be great. So it's been about an hour since we baited the lines. It's pretty late right now. I think yeah. it's like almost midnight, but we're about to head out there and hopefully we have some catfish on the line. Yeah, make us all worth it. Yes. Let's see if they hit the glow worms. <laughs> oh my gosh. Guys, we're hooked up with our first fish. What is it? What the it's heck, it's a bass. bass. What? It's a bass. Are you kidding? That dude swallowed that worm. That's a nice bass. Oh my Look gosh. At that. We got about a two pound bass on the night crawler. <laughs> Dude, smoked it. That's awesome. I was not, this is the first bass I've ever caught in on a drop line. Like I've caught them on yo-yos, but I've never caught a bass on a limb line, which is kind of surprising, but wow, how about that? <laughs> Fish number one is a largemouth bass. Well, since we're not after bass tonight, we're gonna let this guy go. He seems to be in perfectly uh, good condition to be released back into the water. So let's get him back in the water and hopefully we'll catch some catfish after catching this bass. That's epic. We got a fish, guys. And it's shaking the branch pretty hard. <laughs> Is it a good one? I don't know. How's it feel? Oh, oh my that's a pretty gosh, good one. Yeah. Heck that's, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Get out of the tree. Get out of the tree. That's a nice one. That's not a bad one at all. That's probably like an almost three pound channel cat. Heck yeah, that's a good one. Number good. one. Yeah, the first catfish tonight. We got that bass earlier. We were beginning to get worried that we weren't gonna catch any catfish and we had expectations kinda high. And we set the bar at five fish and this is the <laughs> first catfish we've got. But yeah, that's a good one. He's, he means he's gotta be at least three pounds. And if we don't catch any more, that's enough for us to cook for sure. So let's get him in the bottom of the boat 
And we have a few more lines to check, so let's see if we get any more fish like that. We just landed one kennel catfish in that one large enough bass out of all those lemons. We said, I think we said maybe 20 um, total with worms on them. But that's okay, we got a good catfish, and some of those still had some worm on them. So I'm gonna put this guy in our live box for now. And there's a chance that maybe tomorrow in the morning we'll have another one hooked up on one of the limb lines. And then maybe we can run them a little bit more tomorrow morning and catch a couple additional catfish so we'll have something to eat. But we're gonna call it a night. Right now, we'll catch up with you guys in the morning. All right guys, we're back out here. It's day two of the catfish limb lining mission. Um, there was a few holdover worms on the hooks from last night, so we're gonna see if maybe a catfish decided to grab hold of one. It looks like we have one right here. Look at this. I think there's one on this one. Look at that, we got one on the first one. Woo! He doesn't look very big. All right, Jay, go for it. It's exciting. <laughs> Even though he doesn't seem very large. I bet it's a mud cat. Oh no! Oh, get him up it. in the boat! Get him in the boat! Woo! Woo! Heck yeah! That's what I'm talking about. We got another catfish. He's not that big, he's but not he's not a keeper. Big. Yeah, he'll work for sure. Awesome. Good job. Let's go ahead. Let's get this one baited up. Wait, there's something on here. <gasps> no! No! Oh my gosh! Oh no! Look at that! Oh, we had one! Dang. Jay! Oh man, that would have been a good one! Dang! A turtle got it! Oh, that's the work of an alligator snapper turtle right there, probably. Dang! There's a little bit of meat left on it, Jay, if you want to take that home. <laughs> that's alright? Okay, well, unfortunately for this catfish, uh, he didn't make it into our bellies, but made it into an alligator snapping turtle's belly. Could have been some other turtles, but I'm thinking alligator snapping turtle. All right. Rest in pieces. Okay, guys, we got another one. It looks like it could be a good one. It could definitely be a good one. I'm not sure, though. It could be a small one. It's always hard to tell, but he's kind of... How's it feel? You know? It's a pretty good one. <laughs> yeah! Yes! Woo. That's what I'm talking chill, about. Chill. So I couldn't tell how big he was, but it definitely seemed like a nice one. That's about the same size as the one we caught last night. Yeah. Guys, we got another one hooked up, it looks like. Might be a good one. He's got us pulled way up inside of this tree right here. I'm gonna show you. Look at that line moving. How's it feel, Jay? Oh, it's a good one. Is it? Yeah, it's a good one. Pretty good one. Okay. Swing him up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to be bigger than that. He's, he's a good one. He is a good one. He looks a little bit bigger in the water. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. We've got four now. Four Ooh. perfect eating sized catfish. <gasps> He'll eat for sure. Good job, Jay. Let's get him in the boat. Let's bait that one back up since it caught a fish. And let's go check another one. I think we might have one bouncing over there. I'm not sure. It might just be the wind. We'll go check and see. Just made it back here for checking the lines, and I would call that run a success. We got three, three nice channel cats to go with the one we <laughs> caught last night. So we got four total, which means we got two catfish apiece that we can eat, which is plenty for us. And we have all the lines rebated, so we're hopefully we can catch a couple more. Maybe we can invite some friends over and we can all have some catfish together. So we're gonna get the one out of the live box we had last night, take these fish, put them on ice for a little bit, and then go back out there and check the lines if we get some more. All right, so I'm back out here for the final time, checking the limb lines. I'm out here by myself in my kayak this time because, as you can tell, the wind has picked up quite significantly, and it makes it hard to maneuver um, around the lake when the wind's blowing in that canoe, um, especially trying to check limb lines against these trees. So I'm just gonna run around here, see if we got any additional catfish, and uh, hopefully got a couple big ones. Nothing there. Nothing on that one. Maybe we don't have any more. I definitely expected to catch like at least one more. Oh yeah, we got one. There's one, there's one, there's one. Okay, I thought I saw it branch bouncing. Okay, we're hooked up. Might have two. Definitely got one right here. He doesn't seem like he's that big though. Okay, come here fish. 
see if we can do this. Okay. Oh, I didn't feel that bad. Oh, that's a good one. Come here, yes. Oh, he came off in the boat. <laughs> Heck yeah. All right, there we go. That's another perfect eating size channel catfish that brings a total to five now. Uh, there might be one on that line, I'm not sure. We got about five or six more behind us to check. But hey, at least we got one more fish to add to our haul. So I'm gonna put him behind me, just underneath my seat for the time being. And uh, we're gonna go check some more lines. That one doesn't have one. Well, it looks like that's all the catfish we're gonna catch today, but we got five good channel catfish and I'm excited to clean them and eat them later on tonight. I was hoping to catch a few more. I really thought we were gonna catch, you know, two or three more, but hey, that's how it goes sometimes. So we're gonna get back to the house. I'm just drifting back, letting the wind carry me back here. And I'm gonna add this catfish to the cooler and then we're gonna let them sit there for a little bit and then we're gonna clean them and we're gonna cook them. So it's gonna be good. Our catfish have been on ice for a few hours and we are ready to clean them. So let me get one out. They're all about the same size. They're all like two or three pound size catfish, which is perfect for eating. And today we're going to be cleaning them with an electric fillet knife. I'm sure you've seen this on our channel many times. If you're interested in detail on how I clean these fish with electric fillet knife, we have a video that we will link in the video description for you guys to check out. But I'm just going ahead and clean these fish up real quick because Jay and I are pretty hungry and we're ready to get to cooking them. So let's make this quick and easy and good. Be like the best part about living on the lake. You've got catch fish, clay fish, and dumping back in the lake. We've officially started making dinner and we started by making an appetizer, which is some um, donuts. It's actually dessert. It's actually <laughs> dessert and donuts. We uh, got some uh, biscuits, you know, crumb and smashed to a ball, threw in the deep fryer, and they are cooked. So let's get them onto the plate. Oh, shoot, they're rolling everywhere. They look like hush puppies. They look like hush puppies, but they're donuts. And then we have sugar. And you just, you just do this to them. Yummy. Look at that, just roll them around all up in there. Super healthy, super good for you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyways, we got some donuts to snack on. Uh, but anyways, let's get to the real part. We are going to be frying our fish today. I've got some Louisiana fish fry. Stuff I use all the time, just the blue bag. It's really good. And I've got my fillets, which have been soaking and sitting in the fridge for a little while. So I'm just gonna shake them off throw them in this bag. Got them all trimmed up earlier also, and I kind of I kind of made them into little nuggets. So this should be good little fried catfish nuggets. Okay, we've got our fish in our gallon size freezer bag. Got fish fry, so we're just gonna shake it all up now. Get them all nice and evenly coated. This stuff sticks to them really good. Fries up really good. We have our deep fryer already heated up. All right, looks good. Y'all mm. like that? You like that, Jay? Yeah. Okay. You like that donut? <laughs> 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 Jay's already sneaking donuts. Whoops. They're yummy. Okay, here we go. About to be sizzling. Ooh. The only thing about cutting the fish up in these little nuggets is that they cook a little bit more quickly and they cook evenly and they fry up really, really good. This one's a little bit more filet-like. All right, we got the fish cooking. And while we're waiting on them, we eat donuts. <laughs> <laughs> so yummy. Mm, hot. Mm. These are better than Krispy Kreme. Is it better than Hush Puppies? Oh yeah. Oh yeah? You know, Jay, forget the fish. We should just cook um, donuts. <laughs> yeah, it's eating donuts for dinner. They have like donuts, yeah. ice cream, chocolate milk, have it all. First batch is done. Yummy. Okay, there it is guys, there's my finished product. My plate looks awesome. I don't care what Jessica says about the rice. 
Let her know in the comment section that she's wrong about rice and french fries and fish not going together because I think that she's crazy about it. Hey, you ate all the donuts. I did eat all the donuts. You I'm not even hungry anymore. You ate like, all the donuts. I'm not even hungry. Well, here's Jessica's plate. <laughs> that's all she's got going on. She's got a couple pieces of fish and the french fries. That's all right. I still love you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Get him, Jay. Yeah! Woo! Let's go, that one's huge! Oh my gosh, he's big! Oh my gosh. Oh. We are at like our fourth limb line. We have a big catfish on here, I think. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Colin Jay. We are out here on the lake because tonight we are going to attempt the ultimate catch and cook slam. Now let me explain myself real quick. So we're gonna start off by first trying to catch some bluegill. Then, after we get done catching bluegill, we're gonna hang up some limb lines and try to catch some catfish. Then while we're waiting on the catfish lines to go off, we're gonna go out into the thick lily pad swampy area and try to find some big old bullfrogs. So those are the three target species today, bullfrogs, bluegill, and catfish. So we're gonna start off here on the bluegill, on this little bluegill spot right here. Hopefully we can catch some big keeper bluegill as well as some small ones being cut up for catfish bait. So that's how we're gonna start this off. We have about an hour and a half of daylight left. And then as soon as nightfall comes, we're gonna try to get after some big bullfrogs and some big catfish. So we hope you guys are excited to join along with us on this ultimate catch and cook slam. If y'all are, do us a huge favor. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let's get after it. There we go. There we go. That was first cast. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yes, sir. First cast. That is exactly what we are after here in this spot. Some nice, fresh, big keeper bluegill. Hopefully we get a few more of these guys, and then hopefully we catch a couple of smaller ones being cut up for catfish bait. Let's get him in the cooler. Let's get another one. There we go. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That'd be perfect catfish bait. Yes, perfect catfish bait. That is also exactly what we are looking for out here at this spot. So a little bluegill, we can cut them up into a few pieces um, to use for bait on our limb lines. So we'll throw him in the cooler also. Heck yeah. We're gonna turn him into a big old fish. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh. Got him. God, that's another keeper for us. Another keeper for us. Let's go. He smoked it, choked that thing. There he is, Jay. Oh, oh, he spit it out. We got another nice bluegill. Second keeper for us. That's awesome. Oh, get him. That's a stud. That's a stud. Yeah, baby. That ain't no catfish bait. I guess we could bait him up. I guess we could bait that one up for a huge flathead or something, but we don't really catch flatheads over here in this little zone. That's a good one, Jay. I think it's the biggest one we've caught so far. Woohoo! Number three. I think it's our third keeper for us. Woo. Fourth fish total. Give me some. There we go. Oh, we got another bait fish. Another bait fish. Don't come off. Woohoo! Yes. All right, we're gonna be able to do some catfishing tonight. We got two nice little small bluegill. Now in the box, I'm gonna throw back over and just make another little guy real quick. I'm actually more worried about catching the little ones than I am the big ones. <laughs> oh my gosh. That? That's a bass. That's a big old bass. What? He ate my bobber. What? <gasps> and then I snagged him, I think. You snagged him? Yeah, I think I snagged him. He came up and ate the bobber. No freaking way. Don't break my line. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh, he's a big old bass. I think. He came up and tried to eat my bobber, and then I think whenever I set the hook, <laughs> I popped him, but he might have ate the bait. It could. It's near his mouth. Oh my gosh, big old bass on a tiny piece of worm. No way. Oh, it took me the side of his face. Whoa. That's a nice one. Get it here. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That is a beast. Dang. That dude was trying to munch him a brim and uh, he swiped at that little tiny worm. Look at that, you can see it right there. That hasn't happened in a long time. That's a good one, look at his hump head. Well, look at the size of that largemouth, guys. Easily a two and a half pound fish. And you can see right here where he swiped, right there at that hook, and he actually ate the bobber. 
And uh, whenever I set the hook, I'm, that just might be where I hooked him at. But that was crazy. Wow. I threw him next to a piece of grass <laughs> and I saw a squirrel coming towards. I was like, what is that? And uh, it's this big old guy right here. That is definitely a bonus fish. We're not going to be keeping him. But that was definitely a lot of fun to catch. And I was worried he was going to break my line. So I had four pound test line on there, but it's old. So it really fishes like two pound test. So he definitely could have broken it if he wanted to. Anyways, that fish is beautiful. The sun is setting. Yeah. You can see the, like, the gold in his fins. And just look at that hump head. Dude, it's built like a big guy. <laughs> what an awesome fish. And I know he's over there trying to eat some bluegill. Anyways, let's send him back. All right, big guy. You ready to go? See ya. Yeah. Hey, that was cool. Let's see if we can catch some more. Bonus catch. Bonus catch. Here we go, Jay. It's another nice one. Yeah, I finally got a keeper. I Wait. keep missing fish. <laughs> you help feeding the fan? Oh. Oh gosh. We got ourselves a pretty good little mess in there now. Yeah. We've got how many in there? One, two, three, four, five, six for us. And two little guys for the catfish. We need doing, some more little ones, Jay. We're doing good. There we go. That's a good one. Whoa. Holy smokes. Whoa. Get out of those lily pads. Get out of those lily pads. Yes, sir. Another beautiful little bluegill. There we go. There we go. Over Jay. Whew. There we go. Another nice one for some bait. I think we have enough catfish bait now. What do you think, Jay? Yeah, I think we're good. I think it's like our fifth or sixth little bluegill now. And uh, we can cut them up about three or four pieces each. And that sounds about perfect. Meanwhile, you're up there snagged, aren't you? Yes. What you doing snagged? Oh, no. What are you doing? All right. Let's go save your bait and let's go get our limb lines baited up. What do you think? Okay. Let's do it. All right, so we're now moving right along into phase two of this ultimate catch and cook challenge. We've got our pool noodle here full of lemon lines and we're going to start hanging them up on these cypress trees out here in the lake. Let me show you guys how we're gonna do this. I have traded out the worm can as a bluegill chunk can. Got about 15 chunks of bluegill in here. That's the bait we're gonna be using. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put these lines here on these isolated trees. Hopefully not find a tree with a bunch of wasps in it. Just bait it up here on the end. And we're just going to bait these chunks of bluegill onto our little hooks. Just like that. Throw it out there. Throw it out there and hopefully within the next hour or so, we'll start seeing some catfish on the end of our lines. I think we're gonna bait up about 15. It just depends on how many chunks are in here. I think there's 15 or 16 chunks. And that should be plenty enough to catch us at least one catfish. <laughs> It'd be great to catch um, two or three, maybe even four. But really, we just want one big old channel catfish to go in with a mix of bluegill and hopefully the mess of frogs are gonna catch once the sun sets. So let's get some lines banded up and uh, let's just see what happens. bullfrog land so we can hopefully catch some bullfrogs while these lines are sitting out and hopefully after we do that we'll come back and we'll have some catfish on the lines yep that's the plan <laughs> it's been a wild and crazy last hour and a half but yeah. i think it's all going to come together we have a nice spread we got good baits and i think it's gonna be good we're gonna catch some big ones i hope so <laughs> we are approaching our first bullfrog. He's in a very, very tight spot. This would be an epic grab. Jay can get him. Keep that light on his eyes, JJ. Okay, we're going to glass spin there. Oh. Get him, Jay. Yeah! Woo! Let's go. That one's huge. Holy smokes, it is a big one. <laughs> that was a very, very tight spot. Oh Woo! my gosh, that thing is massive. <laughs> Hold him up. Let's get a look at him. Heck Whoa. yeah, Jay. Whoa. Oh. oh my goodness. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get him or not. No, that frog is enormous. That is the kind of frog we're looking for yeah, tonight. Yeah, that's a really big bullfrog. Wow, he was I tucked up tight. Look at his legs. Let me get up here so you can see his legs. Look at that. Monster, monster frog legs. <laughs> that frog's got more meat on it than the bluegill we caught earlier. That's true. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, 
let's put him in this cooler and let's see if we can catch bugs. another one. Yeah, they are bugs literally all over the place and they are getting our eyes. Yep. So. We can't see nothing, but I was able to see to catch this bullfrog. Okay. Ready and close it fast. Nice one, JJ. We're coming up on another bullfrog. We're coming in hot. Keep it on, Jay. Oh, that's a huge one. Oh, she missed him. You got this, JJ. You got this. Easy. Yeah! Woo. Woo. <laughs> Woo. That's a good one. He we was, didn't think he was that big, but that's a really nice one. He's a lot larger out of water. <laughs> wow, what a monster. Woo. You hear all these frogs out here? It's so loud. If you hear those like whistling ones, those are bird voice tree frogs, and we have green tree frogs calling all over the place too. Man, that is a big one. <laughs> nice snag. That's our second bullfrog. Gotta be quick putting them in there so they don't jump out. Yeah. I'm gonna turn that towards you. Ready, steady. Woo. Nice one. Okay, JJ, get that bullfrog. Yes! That is another good one, JJ. There's one up in front of us. Yep, okay, so let's put this one in the box and let's go get that other one. Just make sure the other ones don't jump out. All right, we're gonna try to find a couple more bullfrogs and then we're gonna go check our loom lines. All right, Jay, that is a monster. We need you on this one. We need this frog. Oh, don't jump. Oh, she got him, she got him, she got him, she got him. He almost got away. I saw that, that is epic. Oh my gosh. We needed that frog. We did it. <laughs> Look at the colors on that one too. It is so loud out here. I know, I can't even hear myself think. The green tree frogs are just going ham. They are in every tree, in every branch. That is a nice one. Way to go. <laughs> we got four bullfrogs now. That should be plenty. Yeah, but I think should... that's plenty. Yeah, but if we see any more on the way back, we'll probably snatch them up too. Get on, get out. Here we go. Yes. Give me some, Jay. Give me some. <laughs> Woo! <Ooh>! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Your boy got in on the action. We're heading back to go check our limb lines. That is bullfrog number five on the night. That should be plenty for this ultimate catch and cook extravaganza. What a nice rug. Just chilling here on this tree. It's crazy. Nice. Okay, let's Good get him in the cooler. And let's go see if we got any catfish on the lines. What you do, let me get out. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, he's big. Oh my gosh. Oh. We are at like our fourth limb line. We have a big catfish on here, I think. I think Don't it's a catfish. Lose it. Oh, please, we need you so bad. To complete the slam, this is not a little one. This is not a little catfish. Is it a catfish? <laughs> it's a catfish. It's a catfish. Sweet. Yeah. yeah! That's a nice one! We did it! He's not even hooked in the mouth! Woo! I don't know how that happens. Look at that. Can you see that? He's hooked on the outside of the head. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh, he was fighting so hard. That is what we're talking about, guys. A beautiful, solid, like three and a half pound channel catfish. This is the perfect size fish for the table. And if we don't get another fish, that is okay because this is the goal, as we stated earlier. One nice channel cat. Woo! We have about eight or nine more lines to check, but man, I am pumped. We successfully completed the ultimate catch and cook slam. Yes, we, we did. We haven't cooked them yet, but we've got everything we need for an amazing meal tomorrow. Yes. All right, guys, we are at our very last limb line, and it's got a fish. It doesn't seem like it's that big, but it is something. Let's see if we got ourselves another channel cat on here or not. Come on up. Woo, what is that? Whoa. That was a huge bullhead. Holy smokes. Wow, look at the size of that yellow bullhead. Oh gosh, Woo. that's like one of the biggest ones I've seen. I know, that's huge. That guy has got that hook choked down there. And I, if you stick your hand in their mouth, they chomp on it. It does not feel good. Let's see if I can get down in there. Ow! <laughs> gotcha. I got the hook. I know, that hurts. Yeah, that hurt. Oh, I got the hook out though. Wow, what a monster. 
Add him to the list of species to eat tonight. It's like our PB. I know it's like the biggest yellow bullhead I've ever seen. <laughs> I think it's a monster. So it looks like we've got one really nice channel cat, one nice yellow bullhead, a mess of bluegill, and a mess of bullfrogs. We've got it made. We're gonna have a good time tomorrow. But anyways, Woo! we're gonna go around, pick up the rest of these lines, and uh, we're gonna go back home. We're gonna get cleaned up, get some sleep, and we will catch you guys tomorrow morning. All right, after a good night's rest, we are ready to start cleaning up our catch from last night. We're gonna start off by cleaning the bluegill, and we're gonna clean them a very easy way. Y'all have seen it before on the channel. We're just gonna scale them whole, cut the heads off, throw them in the bowl, and we're gonna fry them up whole. So, show you guys how to do that. We're just gonna scale them with the spoon from the tail to the head. It's really fast, really easy. These guys are cold, holy smokes. All right, all the scales are off. Just cut the head off real quick and we'll be done. Easy as that. We've got ourselves a whole fish right here. Throw in the bowl, we'll rinse them off here in a little bit. So I'm gonna rip to these bullion real quick. Then we're gonna swap over and clean the big catfish we caught. Now we're gonna move on to our big channel cat. We're just gonna fillet him with just a regular little hand knife here. Just make a cut across the back of the head here. And then I'm gonna run the knife down his spine. I'm a lot faster at cleaning catfish with an electric knife, but for those of y'all that like to use a regular hand knife, this one's for y'all. Stick it down here by the anal fin. Run the knife back out towards the tail. All right, that's looking good. Here comes the fillet. Table's kind of slippery with all these shit, with all these uh, bluegill scales everywhere. All right, here is our fillet off of the catfish. It is boneless. We're just gonna take the meat right off the skin now. Holy smokes, it is so slippery. And there we go. Farm fresh from the lake. A beautiful catfish fillet. We'll pull a little piece of red meat off, but otherwise, looks fantastic so all that we are left with now is five big old bullfrogs and these are by far the easiest easiest thing we have to clean today it's so simple so make one cut behind the head let's get this guy out of the way here one cut up here behind the head although it is kind of slick on my table it's making things a little bit difficult but not too bad you take your skin and pliers and these look crazy they, i left them outside and they got all weird looking but they'll be all right and you just pull the skin right off the frog super quick in one motion then flip the frog over you separate its digestive tract right here then you take your cutters the legs off so if you like to separate the legs you can do so with your cutters and then also if you want to take the feet off which we're going to do today just cut the feet off and there you have a delicious meaty chunky bullfrog leg all right, friends, we just tested the oil. Looks like it's hot enough to start cooking, so let's go ahead and start throwing these bad boys in there. Let's throw, I guess we'll throw these frog legs in first. I ain't scared. Oh boy. All right, so these frog legs turned out. Whoa. Well, look pretty good. You know, that fish fry didn't stick to them as good as the flour normally does, but it still looks like it's gonna be good. It looks crunchy. Yeah. Let's get them out of here onto our little tray here. Oh yeah, those look great. Is that our whole fish? And along with those whole fish, of course, we're gonna add some of our filleted up channel cat. Oh man, that turned out a little bit better than the frog legs, I think. Yeah. The frogs were good, but that all stayed stuck. That looks great. And healthy. Looks super healthy, doesn't it, Jay? Oh yeah, we're eating so healthy today. So healthy. Woo, look at that. That looks awesome. Take that in, guys. That is a platter. That looks like the results of an ultimate catch and cook challenge. Whew, that was exhausting last night. We got a little bit of everything. We got bluegill, <laughs> we got frog legs, we got catfish, we got everything we set out to get. We also got some french, french fries. fries. So um, 
yeah, it is time. It is time. It, it is, is time. It is well, <laughs> well overdue that we get in here and try a little bit. I guess we'll start with what we cooked first. The, Do the frog, frog legs. legs. Get this guy. This guy here got a little, little beat up in the deep fryer. Oh wow. That's okay. Let's see how the fish fried frog legs taste. Three. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no time. <laughs> mm. Are pretty dang good. Frogs are good no matter how you cook them. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Oh. I mean, they're very hard to mess up. I mean, if you just single breaded them and threw them in there, they might not be as good. They might not be as crunchy, but they're still gonna taste good. That's great. You get the big part of the frog leg? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh man, that's delicious. Mm. Thumbs up for the frog legs. Two thumbs up for the frog legs. Two thumbs up for the frog legs. That is great. Let's jump into our whole fish now. Okay. Do that. They do not cool off quickly like this. You know, it might be too hot. I'm gonna take a break. Let's go, yeah, let's go, let's cat go catfish. Let's go catfish <laughs> fillet. Let's let those guys cool down. That's crazy. Here, grab catfish. This is actually a piece of bullhead, I think. Ready? Set. Go. Mmm. Mm -hmm. That's some food on your face. Oh, you got some in your beard. Okay. We're good. <laughs> that was delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm. That yeah. might, that's, this might very well have been my PB, um, or our PB yellow bullhead. I can't think of any that we caught that were bigger than this. I think it's so good. Mm. Yep. Two thumbs up for the catfish, right? Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up for the catfish. Now, let's see if our other stuff's cooled down enough. I went and grabbed a fork. Jay already got hers off. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go. This is the whole bluegill. Let's round it out. Ready? Set. Go. go. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like, ready, set, go. Mm. Oh yeah, that is so good. Honestly, if I had to pick my favorite from this spread, from the ultimate uh, catch and cook challenge, I think I'm gonna go with catfish. Mmm. I think that was my favorite bite. And I think it's because I haven't had catfish in a while. We've had frogs and bluegill all spring long. Well, my favorite was the frogs. The frog leg? Yes. Okay, well there you have it guys. We successfully completed the ultimate multi-species catch and cook <laughs> slam last night, cooked them up, we gave you all the verdicts, verdicts on which ones we thought were the best today. and uh, But honestly, guys, it is also good. And it's always just mm -hmm. so great that we're able to go out on this lake and uh, harvest our own food from there at you know, basically any given time. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Frog season is currently underway here in central Arkansas, and we finally have some good weather to get out here on the lake and try to find some frogs. Now, if you've been watching our channel for a while, you know that we like to go after them with our hands, with nets, with whatever we can do. But we especially like to go after them with crappie jig rods, with little crappie jigs attached to them. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our canoe out, we're gonna spotlight around, and when we find a frog, we're gonna try to get as close as we can to it without spooking it, and we're gonna pitch the crappie jig out there in front of his face, and bullfrogs are voracious predators. They will literally eat anything that hops in front of their face, including like baby turtles. We found baby turtles inside bullfrog's stomachs, as well as like baby snakes, crawfish. So, you put this little jig in front of their face, they will definitely go after it. I'd say nine times out of 10, at least until they become a little bit skittish later on in the season. We've already heard some bullfrogs croaking in the distance, so only thing left for us to do is to get in the canoe and start looking around and try to find some big ones. We hope you guys are excited to join along with us on this frog jigging mission. If y'all are, do us a huge favor, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and let's have a night of catching some big bullfrogs. Woo. Let's go. Here we go. Jay is dialed in. We've got a bullfrog right here on the rocks. You zoom in on him so you can see him. Okay, let's see if he'll eat that jig. Come on, buddy, eat that jig. Eat the jig. Get a little bit higher so you can see it. Oh, oh, he, he bit at it, he bit at it. He didn't get it. Okay, it's a good sign. Oh, got him, got him, got him, got him, got him, got him. Get in the boat, get in the boat, get in the boat, get in the boat. Woo! 
my goodness. Hold on a second, hold on a second. And just like that, guys, we are on the board. Way to go, Jay. Got the first one into the boat. I didn't know if I was gonna get this one or not. He was being tough. It took a lot of finesse, and he bit like when we were least expecting it, too. Wow, that is a big end. Look at the legs on that thing. Hold his Ooh. legs up. Holy smokes, Jay, that's a big frog. Oh, yeah. Huge frog. <laughs> now, that is how we get the night started, Jay. Big yes. old fat bullfrog. And the best thing about this is there are four right in front of the canoe. Woo! I'm about to fill this cooler up quick. Yeah, we gotta put this guy <laughs> in the cooler and let's get up there and see if we can catch another bullfrog. Big guy. Okay, we're up here on our next frog. He looks like he is in the feeding position. <laughs> He's probably gonna eat it right off the bat. Come on, froggy, do it. Do it, do it. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. Come on, big guy, come on, big guy, come on, big guy, eat that jig. Eat the jig, eat the jig. What's he gonna do? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. He's big. Oh yeah, he's big. Oh, he's Incoming. in the boat. He's in the boat. Incoming. Woohoo! Got him. <laughs> awesome job, <Whoa>. Jay. <laughs> he's heavy. Yes. He was very heavy. Man, look how the frog got that jig right in the top lip. <laughs> he smoked it. That was so cool. That one did not take as long as the first one. Uh -uh. When they're in the grass like that, they are in full like feeding mode. Yeah. They, are, they are looking for stuff to eat, except yeah. whenever they're they're breeding. But they're not really looking to breed right now. They're just yeah. out here just getting ready, eating a bunch of crawfish, minnows, baby turtles, and of course, crappie jigs. <laughs> Anything that's put in front of their face, they're eating it. It's great to have the slab queen on your side whenever you're trying to catch these bullfrogs. She just, oh. she works wonders with that little crappie jig. Yeah, out here, I'm not the slab queen. I'm actually called Jiggy J. <laughs> so don't mess with Jiggy J. Jiggy J, the bullfrog master. She'll get you every time. Yep. Top lip, <laughs> pinned. Still can't get that guy off. Can't get the hook good. out, oh my gosh. Okay, we have another frog spotted. I'm gonna catch this one for sure. For sure. Does he have it? I don't know. Oh! Oh, oh does he have it? Oh, he hit me with him! She hit me with him! <laughs> Look at there. She said, without a doubt. And yeah. she was right. <laughs> You're like three for four tonight. Heck yeah. How about that? That is great percentage. We got a good hook on there. We're using this little tiny hair jig. He's got a sharp sickle hook on there. That's a good one. Look at those legs on that guy. I know. Like he ate it, but I was like, oh, I'm not really sure if it's in his mouth or not. Yeah, he was but... facing the opposite direction. Yeah, so I couldn't see, but. Heck yeah. You're on a roll, Jay. Woohoo! Okay, so we're doing really good so far. This is frog number three, and we've only been out here for just a few minutes, so we're doing good. Yep. I'm getting really excited, and I don't know how many we're going to catch tonight. Yeah, and in case y'all are wondering, the limit here in Arkansas is 18 bullfrogs per person. We're definitely not trying to catch 36 bullfrogs tonight. Oh, no. Um, but like eight or nine or ten or so would be perfect. Yeah. Let's get him. We gotta be careful. We gotta do this fast. Ooh. All right. Three, two, ah! oh. Ah! Oh, that was almost, almost bad. Tragedy. We almost lost him. <laughs> Good hands. <laughs> okay, we have a frog on a log, and Colt is going to take a hit at it. I don't think there's any chance this one's going to eat. This one's going to be really tough. Oh. Yeah. Dang it. All right, Cole is going to have a go at catching this frog right here. I am so close to it. Oh my gosh. Come on, buddy. I think he's going to do it. This frog is in the feeding position. He's hungry. He's yeah, in the he's boat. in the boat. Oh, he's in the boat. Hang on, I gotta zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go, guys. There is my first frog of the night. My first frog of the 2021 frog catching season. And uh, as you guys saw, he was in the prime feeding position. After you know many years of us doing this, we know just exactly when these frogs are probably going to eat the jig. Not all the time, but like we said, about 90% of the time they're going to eat when in that feeding position. And you can see right that top lip. I think it's called a shiny honey jig. A little arky shiny honey jig with a little sickle hook. 
big old beefy frog leg. I think this is our fourth one, right? Yeah. Fourth one, and we have a couple more behind us, so I'm gonna get to go at those real quick, and then we're gonna swap back off. We're just gonna go back and forth on a few frogs each, and we'll just see how many we get by the end of the night. Heck yeah. Let's go. <laughs> he does it. <laughs> okay, we found our next frog, and it's a big one. Real big one. Real big one. Oh my Frogzilla. goodness. Frogzilla. Oh, look at Frogzilla. Oh, he's right here. Come on, buddy. He got scared. I don't know if he's going to eat it. He went for it, but he didn't have it. He's, he's got it. Oh, yep. Oh, Frogzilla! 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, oh gosh. Oh, 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 oh. Frogzilla's crazy. Frogzilla! <laughs> <laughs> he's honestly not as big as I thought he was going to be, but it's a really good one. He's about twice the size of the one that flung over the side of the boat a minute ago. <laughs> I can't believe he ate it. I threw it in front of him and he turned and ate it. I, didn't, I couldn't see if he had it, but then he jumped and got scared, but he still wanted it. Early season frogs are the best frogs because they're so dumb. <laughs> yeah. So unsuspecting. Like two weeks from now, these guys will be very, very finicky, very hard to catch. Gotta get them while we can. And the cooler. <laughs> Let's go. All right, you ready to catch some more frogs, Jay? Heck yeah. All right, I will trade you a jig rod for the camera. Mm -hmm. Ah. Guys, if y'all thought the last frog was Frogzilla, Imagine that frog times two and you have this guy right here. This dude is huge. A huge male American bullfrog. Jay, drop that jig down. Oh, oh no. Not too high though. Make him come down and eat it. He has to eat it off the ground. There you go. Oh my gosh, we are right up in this guy's grill. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that was an old smart one there. We were, Yay. he was sitting up a little high. You want to be a little lower. Old wise guy. Ugh. Well, let's come back and see if we can hit him again later. I mean, obviously, guys, we know if we were using like a gig or our hands or a net, we probably could have gotten him. Oh, yeah. But we like to do it the sporty way with a crappie yeah. rod. It's fun. Right? <laughs> we'll come, we'll get it's him. More we'll, challenging. We'll get him one day as long as somebody else doesn't get him first. Yeah. Okay, Jay, on to the next frog. <laughs> We're on another frog. Looks like a pretty decent one. Will he eat the chip? Oh yeah! Oh, he's right there. Did he eat it? Did he get scared? He got scared. Oh, oh. nope, he's scared. Smoke his cheese, Jay. Oh, he's hungry. Oh. He's a hungry fella. He's gonna eat it. Yeah! Oh, oh no, no! Man. Oh boy. Oh boy, is this the frog? We've had a little dry spell, Jay. You start off like three for four. Did you see that? I did see that. What was that? I don't know. These fish, these frogs, these fish, these frogs <laughs> are getting skittish over here. I was just raving about how these early season frogs are easy, but these guys are spooky. Oh my goodness. Someone must have been messing with these. Yeah, somebody must have. Because these guys are finicky. <laughs> he jumped straight up like a, like he did like a ballerina move or something. I know. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna see if I can film and catch this one at the same time. Oh, I did it! Oh, I had it! I was so close. Oh, smoked him! Oh, oh he's in the boat! He's in the boat! Whoa, Jay, how many frogs did it take to catch that one? Uh, I had to miss too many. I know, but maybe like 10. Hey! It's crazy. Well, we, think, we finally got another one. <laughs> yeah, we saw a couple of other boats. We think that maybe they went through the past that we went through before us, maybe spooked these frogs a little bit, but yeah. that, that happens. Yeah. And it could have been spooked by some other boats, you know, a couple days ago. The season's been in for about a week now. But that's a good one. 
Heck yeah. I'm not sure maybe we got. We have like six or seven now. I was very nervous. I was like, man, I do not want to miss another fish or another frog. Yeah. Well, it's not really your fault for missing. They just, they're just skittish. They just don't yeah. bite it. Yeah. I guess we missed a couple though. Yeah. Oh, that's Frogzilla. okay. Frogzilla. Frogzilla. <laughs> okay, let's get him in here. He's bigger than I thought he was. Dang. He's bigger Dang. than I thought he was. Yes. Oh, wow. You did it. I did it. <laughs> Heck yeah. Got our last frog of the night. Our headlights and our spotlights are starting to die. This guy just came out of nowhere. We ran through this spot a couple of times, didn't see any frogs, and he just popped up, and that's a nice one. Heck yeah. Wow. And Woo! he got off the hook, and luckily I was able to snag him before he got away. Hey, that's how you wrap up the first bullfrog mission of the year. I think we have about, we have seven or eight in there. We'll have to count when we get back. Um, but yeah, that is awesome. Got some tasty frog legs that will be awesome to fry up tomorrow for lunch. So let's get this guy in the cooler and uh, let's pack it in and call it a night. Let's so go. well done. Big old bullfrog. Woohoo! Well, last night we did pretty well chasing down frogs for our first time this season. We ended up catching seven nice sized American bullfrogs. We had an opportunity to catch probably 10 or 12 maybe, maybe even 15. Um, but they were just kind of skittish last night and we're kind of early in the frog in season I mean once we get to maybe about the beginning of May we get some warm nights Maybe get a warm rain. They will come out like out of everywhere There'll be frogs all over the place and they'll be a lot of fun to catch um, Another reason why I think we might have missed a few but we're talking about this jig we were using This is the jig we were using last night. This is the little shiny honey jig And we're talking about it has a light wire a little sickle hook on there and it was sticking them pretty well But what we noticed is when those fit was when those frogs were coming off in the boat that the hook was actually bending out so I think some of those frogs we lifted up out of the water and didn't get in the boat, they just fell because the hook straightened out. So we're gonna have to use a heavier duty hook next time we go out jigging. But otherwise, it was a lot of fun. We spent about two hours out there and we got a nice mess of frogs. So what we're gonna do now, if I don't knock my frog over, is we're going to show you guys how we skin and clean one of these frogs and then we're gonna do the best part of all this, which is cook them up. So, let's take this little guy here. We'll set these guys aside. Got some really nice ones here. And this guy, while he is the smallest of one, that's a really, really decent sized bullfrog. So what you're gonna do, it's really easy to clean a bullfrog. You wanna have a sharp knife, a pair of skinners. These are just catfish skinners. And then you're gonna want something that you can cut through bone with. Um, normally I have some game shears, but I couldn't find them. So I have some garden snips. These will work just fine. So what you'll do is you can either make a cut right behind the head or make a cut down here by the legs. It really doesn't matter. You're not gonna get anything off the back. There's literally nothing right here. It's just bone. Hear that? That's just, there's nothing there. There's no meat there. There's like some skinny, little skin meat, but it's just really not worth getting. Um, so what we'll do, we'll just make a cut behind the head real quick. Okay, so we got our cut across the back and we'll just grab the skin, just like you would skin a catfish. And you're just gonna peel the skin right off the frog. Peel it off in one snip right there. So what you're left with is you have the legs. So right here, you wanna cut this part right here. This is um, what connects everything to their di digestive tract. So you'll just cut that little part just kind of nice and easy. And then you're cut all the way down to that backbone. And what I like to do is just take my either game shears or snippers and I just cut it in half. Just take that off. And we have the rest of our frog. I'm gonna throw this in the bucket. We're either gonna put that rest of that frog in our garden or we're gonna use it for catfish bait. One of the two. So the rest of the frog is definitely not gonna go to waste. So then what you're left with is a pair of legs with the feet on. You can leave the feet on if you want to. Normally we just cut them off. So we'll just snip them off. The snippers are kind of dull, but they're getting the job done. There's the feet. I might feed these to my pet fish. Mr. Bass would probably like to eat these frog feet. And then we'll just separate these two legs. You can leave them together if you'd like to, like if you're gonna throw them on the grill. I like to leave them together, but we'll just cut them off. What we're left with, they're kind of dirty right now, but we'll rinse them off, is a pair of delicious, fresh frog legs. Yummy. Isn't that great? Yeah. Anytime we can get out on the lake and harvest our own food, it's just it's just really great. We prefer to catch our own food than buy it at the store, and especially frogs. I mean, frozen frog legs at the store are definitely not nearly as good as the ones you catch yourself. So we're gonna clean the rest of these frogs real quick, and uh, we'll get to showing you how we cook them up in the deep fryer. We just wrapped up cleaning up the rest of those frogs. We've got some beautiful, delicious looking frog legs here in the bowl. I'll rinse it off in this water. We have 14 frog legs to eat today for lunch. And I'm gonna show you guys how we are going to get them ready to throw into the deep fryer, which is heating up over there. So it's very easy. Um, this is definitely a method that I would recommend doing if you want your frog legs to be extra crunchy. And we're gonna start off by throwing our frog legs in this bag of flour. 
So they're already kind of moist just from being in the bowl. So let's get these guys, we'll shake off the excess water. And we'll throw like four or five in here just to get this party started. There's two, look at that. It's like a little chicken leg. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a soggy chicken leg, but hey, it'll work. These guys are often referred to as uh, swamp chickens. As far as like, what they taste like, I mean, it literally tastes just like a, tastes like a chicken. A chicken and a fish had a baby. But better. But better. So good. Okay, so we got some in the bag, and we're just gonna give them a little shake, 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 shake. I think we got a leak. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's all right. It's all right. A little flour didn't hurt nobody, guys. Okay. So there is phase one. I go. I guess phase one is cleaning the frog and rinsing them off. So that's I guess step two. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to take our guys out individually, and we are going to dip them. It's some milk. You can use milk, you can use buttermilk, you can also use um, whisked eggs. We didn't have any eggs. Normally I would do eggs and milk together, but we're just gonna do milk today and it all works out. So we're gonna give them a little dunking in that. Okay, a little dunk. And I'm just gonna do just this once, just for demonstration purposes. And then, once we have them dunked, we're going to move them over. Oops, I gotta open this up. We're going to move them over into our seasoned batter. So this is um, Uncle Buck's beer batter. It's really, really tasty. It's kind of spicy. It's just, it's just really good, especially on frog legs. So we've got that guy. We're gonna throw him in here. Got him double dunked, and we'll shake him up. Now, if you are somebody who also goes out and catches frog legs in the spring, and you have a recipe that you would like to share, definitely do so in the comment section below. We're always wanting to dig up some good, juicy, delicious frog leg recipes. They're really hard to mess up, guys. They're so good. And then, once we have that. This is our finished product. Let me pull them out so you can see what it looks like. A heavily battered frog leg. It's kind of blowing in my eye. The leg's blowing, wind, wind's blowing <laughs> in my eyes. Can't looks talk. <laughs> that looks great. And so I think our, our deep fryer is heated up. So let's just run over there and throw them in the, throw them in the deep fryer so we can show you guys what this all looks like. Gentle. Ready, Jay? Ready. Here we go. And mm. boom. There it is, guys. That's the process. That is how we deep fry our frog legs. So we gotta get back over to the table. We gotta whip those other ones up real quick so we can throw them in here so that we can get them all cooked up around the same time so we can enjoy them in just a few moments. Okay, here's our sampler. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, buddy. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Ooh. Just think about that, Jay. That looks delicious. Okay, let's set him on the plate. We'll let him start cooling off. Starting to rain a little bit, so that'll cool him off. Let me grab the rest of these frogs real quick. Look at that. Don't move a second. Crispy golden cupification. Hey, you caught that one. Let's, let's drop <laughs> these bad boys in there. Let's get the rest of the squad going. This would be a whole lot more appealing to the eye right here. Oh, baby. You gotta be careful of those frog legs. And just because they're detached from the frog doesn't mean they won't start trying to kick around and kick out of here. They got some weird nerves. Especially pour some salt on them. They start jumping all over the place. This second batch is looking dang good. Oh man. You wow. can just feel the crisp on those. Mm. You really, I really like my frog legs to be crunchy, don't you, Jay? Yes. There's nothing worse than like a soggy frog leg. When you cook them this way, even when they kind of cool off, they still maintain their crunch. Mm. It's just like with anything, like with chicken, with fish. Ooh. If you want it fried, you want it to be crispy. Heck yeah. And brown. Jay, you pumped? Yeah, look at this tray, guys. Like, this is so exciting. I cannot wait to dig in. So that's what I'm about to do right now. I'm about to do the taste test. Okay. Oh my goodness, these look delicious. <laughs> this is like the best okay. part of all these videos is the taste test. The taste test. Although I have a feeling where this is going. Okay, it's ready? Good. Yep. Oh yeah. Does it taste like you caught it last night? Mm-hmm. <laughs> taste fresh. Tastes like a swamp chicken. Swamp mm. chicken? 
Man, that's so good. How's that breading? This batter, I, I, yeah, this breading is perfect. And I heard that crunch, so mm -hmm. that's good. It is literally perfect. Yeah, she's going for the she's going for the little part first. I always go for like the thigh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can go for the thigh. <laughs> Look at she's going in. Oh wow, she's an animal. That's good. Wow. <laughs> yes. Uh, Jiggy J don't play around when it comes to these frogs. Mm -hmm. I told you that last night. Mm -mm. Man. That's good eating. You're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, which one am I gonna get? Which one am I gonna get? I'm gonna go for the little guy. I'm gonna go for the little guy. A little tender, a little tender morsel. And this one, this one we just pulled out. He's gonna be kind of hot. But, man, this is just falling apart. Looking great. I'm gonna go for <laughs> this little spot right here. What? What? <laughs> Don't burn yourself. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's dang good, isn't mm. it? I love this time of year. I love the springtime. Fishing's good. Frogging's good. Eating's good. Everything's good in the hood. The weather's good. It's warm. It's green. Green. Our gardens it's got are. Got some flowers. We got some flowers. Our gardens are, are thriving. Let me show you guys the gardens at some point. We'll do that in another video. But this video is all about the frog legs. And this is delicious. And I definitely recommend. Now, if you've got any spot where you think you got some frogs or you got a spot where you know there are some frogs, you should go out there. You should definitely go out there and take a jig rod, take a gig, take a net, take your bare hands, go wrangle you up some frogs and cook them up the same way we did today because it is bomb. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cole and Jay and as you can see we are currently on the lake right now. It's about 45 minutes till dark and we're about to set some yo-yos up to run for crappie tonight. So it's going to be so much fun. If you guys love crappie fishing be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. But other than that, Cole, I'm going to let you show them how to set it up. Alright. If you're unfamiliar with yo-yo fishing, let me break it down for you. This is a yo-yo and basically it is an automatic fish catching device. Let me show you guys the working parts of this. So inside of the yo-yo, there is a metal coil and that coil allows you to pull out and retract line. You see that? It's kind of like a pulley system. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to pull out some line and if you see on the wheel, let me get one of those notches. You see those notches? Those notches allow you to set the yo-yo to a desired depth. We have it set kind of shallow right now just for demo purposes. But you see it, how the bait is set and the line's not able to go back inside the yo-yo? It's going to sit like that and we're going to bait it. So we'll bait it with a minnow. Okay, so now let me show you how you're going to hook a fish to the yo-yo. So imagine the minnow is swimming, dangling on the hook, and then a fish swims up and eats the minnow. It's going to pull the hook and pull the line and it's going to release that lever on the yo-yo. You see that? And then once it's released, it yanks the hook up into the roof of the fish's mouth and we've got the fish. And then once that fish is hooked, and it's like, you know, fighting on the line, that coil system allows you to maintain pressure with that fish and it keeps the fish from getting off. In best case scenario, it keeps the fish from getting off. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go around to all these different trees out here. We got a bunch of cypress trees and we're gonna hang them up. I have a rope or just a piece of paracord tied to my yo-yos and it has a little loop, making it easy to hang up. So I'll show you guys how that works. Here's a good branch, we're on a good tree. You just simply loop it over, pull it through and hang it up. Super easy. And with that loop, you're able to easily uh, detach the yo-yo from the tree. And you don't have to continuously, you know, cut and retie yo-yo lines all the time. We have about two dozen yo-yos in the box. We're gonna hang up, scatter them all around out here on these trees. There should be some fish out here, and hopefully we can find a nice concentration of them. So let's get after it. Let's go catch some fish. Heading back to the house now. We baited about two dozen yo-yos. Gonna spread out pretty good. And uh, we're just gonna let them sit out there for about an hour. We'll come back out there and check. It'll be dark then, so we'll be in the dark with headlights. And hopefully we'll be able to show you guys what we catch, if we catch something at all. But I'm confident we'll catch something. Not sure how many we're gonna catch, but if we catch a couple good ones, I'm good with it. What about you, Jay? Yep. Good with it? Good with okay, it. So we'll see you guys in a minute. All right, everybody, Jay and I are bundled up. We have waited about an hour and a half to go check the lines. It's dark, it's pitch black out here, actually. It's cold. It's very cold. It's like we said, <laughs> we're bundled up, but we're gonna paddle out there and see what we got on our, on our yo-yos. I'm sure we got something. I'm not sure what exactly it's gonna be, but that's what's fun about yo-yo fishing. You never know what you're gonna catch, and hopefully we'll have several crappie on the lines. How many do you think we have? Do you think we have over or under five? I'm always gonna take the over. 
Over five. I bet we have. I bet we have seven. Mm. I'm going seven. Which, if there was a, if the, if the fishing was really good, I would say like 15 or 20 <laughs> out of 24 all day. But since it's been slow, I'm gonna say seven. You going under five? Oh, I guess I will. Okay. Since you took the over, but okay. yeah. Okay, I'll say five or under. Okay, five or under, and six and higher. <laughs> First fish. It's a good one too. Looks like a decent crappie. Really decent. That's like our third yo-yo we've checked. Dang, that's a nice one. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, look at that Dang. slab. Slab city out here, baby. Nice. That's a really solid fish. Really, really nice black crappie. Probably pound a quarter-ish. Really, really nice fish. We're gonna put them in this bucket. We got some, we need to put some water in there. And I saw another yo-yo shot up. I can't really tell how big that fish was, but we at least have another fish out there. So there's one. We're well on our way to the over five number that we set. Awesome. Woo. Here we go. Oh, he's feisty. He's feisty. Oh, whoa. A bullhead. Yep. Here's our second fish. We're gonna throw, he's just hooked outside the mouth. How about that? There's our second fish of the night, a yellow bullhead. This is gonna to count towards the number of fish caught, but we're gonna throw him back. You know, bullhead aren't bad eating, but he's just not very big and he's very, very lively. So we're gonna let him let him back into the lake and let him get a little larger. Really cool fish. I like how like super greenish yellow they are. Just really cool colors. But he's about to fin me, so. Here we go, folks. We've got our second crappie. Ends up another big one. Oh hey, yeah. That's a slab. Woo! That's what I like to see. Dang, that's a slab. Second nice slab one. of the night. He might be bigger than the first one. He's really close. They look like twins. No, they're nice. Okay, just slide him back. Slide him in the bucket. A couple of dandies. Woo. Good job, Jay. Doing good. Coming up on our third keeper slab of the night. Looks a little bit smaller than the other ones, but that's okay. That dude ate that thing. <laughs> wow, he choked it. Hey, that's a white crappie. That's a nice one. Yeah. Probably about an 11 incher. Nice. Nice slab crappie. Probably about three fourths of a pound. Beautiful. Just a beautiful fish. In the bucket. We got a big one. This might be our biggest one. Gene might have to paddle up there a little bit. Dad. Big guy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Is this slab? Yeah! Dang, dude! That is awesome. Definitely biggest one of the night. Heck wow. yeah. That's a good one. That's awesome. That's a really good one. Dang! Like, he's holy like, cow! He's like a pound and a half. He is thick. Real thick. <laughs> Real oh. thick. Alright, slide him in there. This is fun. This is a good time. Always. Well, there we go. We got a largemouth bass. This is definitely not the target species that we're after. Um, he's kicking pretty good. It was down the water, so we'll get him unhooked and get him back into the water. Sorry about that, Mr. Bass. But the good news is we saw another fish. Oh, he's thrashing. We've got another fish up on our next yo-yo. So let's get this bass unhooked and uh, let's go up there and see what we have in our, up, in our upcoming yo-yo. Oh, he go. Perfect. Oh no, not another bullhead. Another bullhead, baby. <laughs> He's a little bit bigger than the first bullhead we caught. We saw him thrashing from across the way. We thought we had a big old crappie, but we got up close and we saw too much white on him. Dang. Chunky dude. <laughs> big old chunky dude. Oh, Ooh. I hope our pet bullhead gets this big one day. There he is, another nice. bullhead. Get him back in the water. So what number is that? I think we have four crappie in the box, mm -hmm. caught two bullheads and a bass. So we're at seven. Dang. Yeah, so I'm, I'm smoking you right now. 
Well. And we've got about seven or eight more yo-yos to check, I think. So, you definitely lost the numbers back. Well, I'm definitely not upset. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would be. Nobody should be. But let me get this bullhead back in the water. Made it back. Let's show you guys one final look at the fish we caught, or the four slabs we kept. Doi. Couple of really <laughs> nice black crappie right here. We have a lime box over here. The fish are still like super alive. We don't want to clean them tonight, so we're gonna put them in a lime box overnight. So let's get those big guys in there. Like these are some really, really solid, solid fish. Yeah. Like completely worth going out. Should I lay them all out first? Just so we can get a good look at them all before I put them in the box for the night. Okay, so there's two black crappie. There's our white crappie. And that's a good fish, but those two black crappie dwarf it. And one more good black crappie. Nice. Yeah. I can't tell which one of these is bigger. I think that this one's bigger. This one looks a little bit thicker. They really look like twins. Look like twins. This is a good one too though. So we got three nice black crappie, one good white crappie. We're gonna put them in the live box for now and uh, we'll get back with them tomorrow. What's up guys? Welcome back to another adventure in the fishing episode. Today we're down here below a dam on the Arkansas River and we're hoping to catch some big fish. This is a great time of year to catch a bunch of different species and recently we've been having a lot of success down here especially later on in the afternoon into the nighttime. So right now there's white bass, crappie, sauger, striper, drum, and hopefully some blue suckers running these banks and um, we're hoping to catch a bunch of them tonight and hopefully have some we can take home for dinner. You know the sauger run it doesn't last forever. This is whenever they're doing it. And I'm hoping that they'll be feeding up on the banks tonight. We've already got a bunch of gear down here on the edge of the bank. We're in a nice little current break. And this is pretty much what we're gonna be rocking. We're gonna be rocking some double jigs. Um, right now I've got a crappie magnet on top. I've got a grub on the bottom. We'll probably swap it up uh, to some darker colors as it gets dark time. Um, I've got a small 1000 size reel spool with some braid. I've got a six foot six inch ACC crappie sticks, one piece medium with some eight pound leader and it should be the ticket to catch some fish tonight. If we don't catch anything, I'll be very shocked, um, but I'm feeling like the odds are in our favor because we have perfect conditions. It was really warm today. We're gonna have a warm night, and that's what you're looking for in the early spring to catch these fish on the riverbank. So if y'all are excited for today's adventure, do us a huge favor, hit thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. Let's walk down these rocks, hopefully not bust it, and catch some fish. Let's go. Uh-oh. There we go, first fish. What are you? What are you? I think it's a white bass. Come on. Come on. Boom, there we go. First fish of the afternoon is exactly what I expected to catch. A nice little male white bass. I'm assuming it's a male. Females should be out here too. But the females, they got those big old bellies full of eggs. Good sized fish, definitely a good keeper sized fish. We're gonna send it back. We might keep some if this is all we catch, but we're looking for the crappie, the saugers, the good stuff. We'll send it back. There we go, that's a crappie. That's a crappie. That's a crappie, that's what we're after right there. Boom. That water got nice and still. The crappie like the slower water, and this water is always changing, but when you get like a break in it, and it calms down like that, you gotta be anticipating that bite. It's this one in there and they'll bite it. That's a good keeper, white crappie, first one of the night. What a gorgeous fish. I mean, they got great colors. The river's actually pretty clear for this time of year. And these fish, they start getting a little bit darker as they get into spawning season. Wouldn't be crazy if we caught one that was really dark tonight. Cool fish. Let's throw them in the bucket and let's catch another one. That's a crappie. That's a crappie. True or false? <laughs> Third fish of the afternoon. Oh gosh, that's busted. Don't bust it, coleslaw. Can't bust it for a fish like this. Little dinky white bass. We're looking for some about eight times larger. Go ahead and give him the treatment. And he'll splash. He bit the little curly tail grub. I'm gonna use this bait until they quit biting it. As it gets darker, I like to use darker colors. I and mean, they'll also hit the, hit the bright white, but I like to have a dark one on there also. I'll probably put a black and chartreuse crappie magnet to complement the white and chartreuse. But while they're biting that, we're gonna keep throwing that. There we go, is that a crappie? Show is, let's go, let's go. 
second crappie of the night and they're biting pretty good and that time i made a conscious effort to make sure i run my bait all the way back into the rocks because as it starts to get dark these fish they'll pull up right next to the bank so you don't want you don't just want to reel it in you want to commit to the cast reel it all the way in work it like you can catch one fight i mean you can literally catch one underneath your feet like i just caught this one another good little slab not a monster slab but a slab indeed we're gonna throw him in this bucket get back after it he smoked the white church's crappie magnet guys if y'all haven't gotten on the crappie magnet program yet you need to we've got a link down to our crappie magnet bundles down in the description it has all of our favorite colors and you can catch crappie like this this spring check it out link description put them in the bucket let's catch another one another one right at the bank oh it's another crappie that one's not going to be a keeper though dang it another one right underneath my feet I don't have my crappie checker on me and I'm not going to risk it for the biscuit. That's definitely not a keeper though. You can tell when they're, when they're keeper slabs. That's probably like a nine incher, but still a pretty good fish. I think it'd be 10 inches out here on the river to keep. We're going to send him back in there and get some more of the bite. Is not, not, I'm not going to say on fire just yet, but it's pretty good. It's pretty close. All right, send him back. All right, so I haven't had a bite in about a whole six minutes. So I'm making the change. I'm gonna put a dark colored grub on the bottom jig. I got just this little black and chartreuse grub. I'm gonna rig it up here on the double cross jig head. See if that works. The other night I was down here fishing and I was catching a ton on the black and chartreuse crappie magnet. So I'll probably try that here in a little bit, but I wanna see if this grub with that little bit of extra thump down there in the dark water will get a few extra bites. I've also got you know, I still have the white and chartreuse magnet on top. I could substitute that out for that black and chartreuse magnet. We're going to try a lot of things, but um, it's about to be prime time. Let's see if that works. Oh, oh, I got him. I thought I missed him. Oh! Here we go. It's not much. It's not very big. But we have the pride and joy of the Arkansas River right there. This is what you come down here for this time of year. And while this is a small one, this is the fish that we want. That is a sauger, arguably the most tasty fish that we have to offer here in Arkansas and just all across the Southeast. I, don't, I think saugers range across most of North America, but I don't get to catch these all the time. This is pretty much the only time of year I catch them is down here in the springtime below these river dams. That's probably a little male. Hopefully we can find some big females to take home and eat. But these fish are just so cool. They're cousins to the walleye. And I think that they're honestly cooler than the walleye in their colors. This here doesn't have a ton of crazy colors, but we can catch some that are really colored up tonight. That is awesome. What time is it? 7.45. Had to get dark, but finally got our first sauger on the bank. See you later, little guy. What's he gonna do? Oh, he's gonna shuffle. <laughs> he's just chilling. Catch a big one. Oh, there he is. I thumped it twice. Is that a crappie? It is a crappie. Another keeper, too. That's what I'm talking about. He bumped it. I didn't set the hook. Then he gave me a second chance. And then that's the white crappie. He bit the white and chartreuse and pink head. It's a bright color. You, you would think that they could see the darker colors better in the water, but they could see that pretty good down there, too. Another good keeper crappie. Right by the bank. I have a secret weapon I'm going to bust out here in a little bit too to catch these fish right by the bank. But for now, we're going to keep casting these double jigs around. Let's add him to the bucket. Let's get some more. Another one right by the bank. What is that? White bass. They're like bumping it weird. It's like they're just, I don't know. It's like it almost feels like I'm running into fish. Snagged him in the gill. Oh gosh. Little Jimmy White Bass. A tiny guy. He's like folding up like a taco. Hey, there's a fish on there. Another little white bass. We need to find some of them big mama white bass. Still fun though, send it back. There we go, there we go. Up here, oh, it's a big old slab, gosh dang. Heck yeah, I thought it was a white bass. It's a giant, holy crap, look at the tub on that thing. Whoo! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Busted out the secret weapon a little bit early. And that is also what we're after tonight out here on the riverbank. You know, hoping to catch some big saugers, but also hoping to catch a bunch of big slabs like this. I mean, that thing is round. I mean, that's bigger than a dinner plate. 
That is a monster. Whenever he bit it, I thought that I had a white bass. So talk about my secret weapon. This is the secret weapon. I carried along the other night a 13 foot HTC crappie six jig and rod just to reach out there and poke around the bank because like I mentioned, these fish, they pull up right on the rocks and it's just a way for me to keep my bait in the strike zone for a long time. I got the black and chartreuse crappie magnet on there and he just thumped it. Hoping that we could bank flip some big saugers or some striper with it also tonight, but that is awesome. Hopefully there's more where that came from. That is a nice black crappie. I mean, look at that thing, just thick. You gotta love that. There we go. Oh gosh. Oh, that's a runner. That is a runner. What is that? I think it's a white bass. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. Oh, it's a drum. It's a drum. <laughs> oh man, he took off like crazy. We got our first drum of the night. I figured we'll probably catch several of these, maybe catch some bigger ones. I don't know. These guys are quite abundant on the river this time of year. He popped that crappie magnet and he took off the other way. This rod's got a lot of backbone and it just handled him like a boss. It'd be cool to catch a bigger one on this thing, but we'll go let him go. Drop back down in there and jig around the rocks so we can't pull ourselves up something good. There we go. That's a big fish. Up here. Oh, is that a sauger? It's a sauger. Let's go. <laughs> Guys, we were already having fun, but now we're having some serious fun. Go to our first good keeper sauger of the night. I mean, look at his fin. Isn't that cool? Look at the black spots on there. This one's got some great modeling also. This one's probably, I don't know how long he is, probably 15, maybe 16 inches long. He gobbled that black and chartreuse crappie magnet. Got an eye hole jig on there too with some slab magnets in there, slab bites. And, uh, he smoked it, got him on the big jig rod also. That was crazy. He thumped the crap out of it. I let the bait go downstream and then I kind of turned it, let the pendulum back upstream and he was all about it. I didn't know what I had. I never caught one of these on a big jig rod before, but that's awesome. We're gonna throw him in the bucket with our crappie, get back down there. Hopefully these guys are starting to move in and we can catch a bunch in a hurry. The limit's six, so we're one down, five to go. Heck yeah. There we go. A little something something. I think it's a little sauger. Let's go. Yes, sir. Okay, I made the swap back to my normal casting rod and first cast got me another sauger. Not a monster, but he's big enough to keep, so I'm probably gonna throw him in the bucket just in case we don't catch any more tonight. Um, this is probably the smallest one I keep. If I catch any more of this size, I'll probably throw him back, but I want to have it as some sauger insurance in the bucket. He bit the black and chartreuse curly tail grub. The water seems to be calming down a little bit, which is good for me. It seemed like it was kind of fast as soon as it got real dark and the bite was a little slow, but that's a good fish. Let's add him to the box and let's gonna catch some more. Oh man, that happens like, that's happened like three times now. Got in that time. What is that? I don't even know what that is. Is that a sauger? It is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at that. That is a tiny little sauger. I had a fish come up and chase it, and I couldn't tell what it was. I dropped it down there again and missed again. I mean, that fish you saw, that fish was literally, I mean, a foot from the bank. They're pushing up. It's a little tiny male, I'm assuming. Oh, definitely too small to keep. But it's just cool to catch them. Like I said, we don't catch them very often, and they are just so cool looking. Yeah, send him back. Peace. Here we go. What is that? It's another sauger. <laughs> another little guy. He bit the top. Oh, don't shake it. Oh, gosh. That was almost bad. He almost shook the other hook into my hand. Another little sauger. We need the big mamas. He's a cute little guy, though. Very cute. Very handsome. We're going to send him back. Kind of feeling kind of cold now. I'm not gonna change. I'm not gonna put my hoodie on until I catch another keeper. Where are the white bass? Oh gosh, there they go. It's a crappie. 
All right, we just pulled the old switcheroo on and put a new bait on. I swapped to a three inch black and blue and chartreuse scrub and second swing through, through the bank right here. Hooked up with this nice crappie. It's been a while since I've had a bite. I told myself I wasn't gonna put on, oh, I told myself I couldn't put my hoodie on until I caught another keeper and I am getting quite chilly. So I'm glad this fish decided to show up. It's a good slab. He's probably like 11 and a half inches. So not a monster slab, but a good slab. And he's gonna go in the bucket and I'm gonna put my hoodie on because I got goosebumps all over my arms. I'm good everywhere else, but my arms are frigid. The wind kind of picked up and the temperature is starting to drop, but hopefully the bite is going to turn on now. It's been a little slow, a little slower than I anticipated, but let's get in the bucket and get back in there. Hey, let's give you all a time check. It is 9.02. Been out here for some time now. Um, we'll probably stay until at least 10. If things don't start looking up before then, we'll probably leave around 10, but if we get some bites, we'll probably stay till 11. That's how it works out. Hopefully they're gonna turn on because I wanna stay out here forever. I wanna stay out here all night. I don't ever wanna go home. I just wanna catch crappie on this 13 foot jig rod. Sling him up on the bank. I'm just kidding. There we go. Oh gosh, he's flying in. I don't know what he is. It's a sauger. Come here, little buddy. He went flying. I wasn't even ready for it. I don't think he was ready for that. Another little sauger, not the right size, but the right species. I actually swapped it to another jig. This scrub's a little bit smaller. It's the same color basically as the other one. The other one, the tail wasn't kicking as good. Doesn't hear the tail's kicking better. We're gonna send our little buddy back, see if his girlfriend is down there, as we want her to go in our bucket. He's too small. Every time I swap baits, I catch fish. Do you know why that is? Oh gosh, oh, that's big. That's big. That's something serious. Oh my goodness. What is that? Oh, it's a drum. It's a big drum on the big pole. Come on with it. Look at that bend. Look at that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he smoked it. Golly. I don't think these big rods are a little awkward. Come here. Come here. Oh, oh, no! I lost him! He was this big. He was like this big. Man! I should have boat flipped in. I didn't want to break my pole. Oh well, it's just a drum. It was just a drum, guys. It was just a drum. It was a mucho grande drum, though. <sighs> At least I think I got a bait they like. Let's put on a new one and get back down there. It's always been when I go from here to like this. But it feels like that's the calmer water. See that? Look at that big old slab. Let's go. Had to talk through that one. <laughs> Another good crappie. That is awesome. I was working my bait kind of down this way towards the dam, turned it, brought it back the other way, and he thumped it. Thumped the crap out of it. He's not the five pound drum that we lost, but this is way better eaten. So throw, I need to bring the bucket closer to me. It's, all, it's ended up like 20 feet down the bank now. And every time I walk over there, I almost busted on these stupid rocks. Let's put in the bucket, Let's catch some more. Oh, come on, soggies. Oh gosh, look at that one. Next cast, let's go. Let's go, he's even bigger. They're fired up, They're fired up. I'm fired up, look at that one. He's like twice as big as the one we just caught. Woo, I got that thing. So I did, I pulled another trick on. I keep, I keep, I keep pulling out little tricks. Let me show you this new trick I got. So there's that little bit smaller grub I was talking about, spike and chartreuse. But if you look, I got that eighth ounce eye hole jig head and I've got it stuffed with some slab bites. So I got a little scent in there. Those crappie love that scent. That's a good one. Oh baby, come to Papa. What are you? A white bass, yellow bass. It's a yellow bass. I think this is our fifth species of the night. Y'all can fact check me down in the comments section, but this is a yellow bass, a pretty, pretty studly one. I swapped to just a single 
crappie magnet, just trying to get the bait to kind of float in the current a little bit slower. I got kind of tired of holding the 13 foot rod. While that is fun, that rod is a little bit beefy to hold forever. I might swap back to it here in a minute, but that is a nice blue yellow bass. I can't even tell how yellow he is, but I can just tell he's yellow bass based on his stripes and his really pointy dorsal fin. Cool fish, but we're gonna toss him back and hopefully get back on the crappie train. Gars are rolling. Oh, 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 I think that's a crappie. Please be a crappie. It is. Big Daddy Slab. Let's go! Come on! Look how fat that one is. Can y'all tell I'm fired up? Look at that thing. The single crappie magnet. Black and chartreuse, chartreuse double crosshead. Again, you can get this bait in our crappie magnet bundles. Got them linked down in the description. Perfect for night fishing, perfect for fishing in dirty water. Look at that slab right there. Look at the tub. That is a nice one. I don't care what y'all say. Look how big her mouth is. Ah, awesome. Okay. The action's definitely picked up over the last like 25 minutes. What time is it now? 9.30, yeah, we've caught like five crappie in the last 30 minutes. And I've just been kind of messing around too. That's awesome. Dude, I got throttled twice in a row. Got you that time, baby. What kind of fish are you? Oh, is it a sauger? I forgot about y'all, oh my gosh. I forgot all about the saugers. We've been catching crappie and having fun and this is another good keeper. Would you just look at that, look at the spots. Does he have patterns on this side? He's got patterns on this other side. Oh yeah, oh no. Oh man. Is he the biggest sauger I've ever caught? No. Is he a decent sized keeper? Yes. Can I let him go because I dropped him on a rock? No. He's gonna go in the bucket with us. I forgot about, I forgot about sauger. I don't know how I forgot about him. He's like, hey, we're still here. So I've been catching them kind of on the left side of me. I think the water's breaking right there a little better than what it is in front of us. It's just gotten dark and it's kind of hard to tell what the water's doing, but I made three casts in a row, got bit two, and then caught this guy. So I think we're gonna start casting some more over that way. Good fish. Got him that time. What is that? It's a crappie. It's a little crappie, not a keeper. It's like our smallest fish of the day. <laughs> Little tiny white crappie. Got a little spot dialed in right here all of a sudden. Send him back and get back in there while the fish are still hanging out there. These fish turn on and off like on the, on the flip of a switch. So you definitely want to capitalize while they are biting. I've had like five bites in a row now. I want to get some of uh, that clear blue fluorescent line that shines under a black light and bring that black light fully charged and shine it out there. So I can really see my line. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, is that a keeper? It's a keeper. Oh, he splashed me in the eye so bad. I'm going to be blind tomorrow. Got us another nice little keeper crappie. Black chartreuse crappie magnet. Not our biggest of the night, but it's still a solid fish. And put in the bucket. Our bucket's looking really good. We've got some quality fish down in there. We're going to add him to it. I mean, look at this. We got crappie, we got saugers. We got some good ones. Oh, don't jump out, little buddy. Stay in there. But there's still room to improve on that. Let's get some more. One more keeper and I unlock this little nugget right here. Oh. That right there is the nectar. That's like my favorite drink of all time. I pulled it out of my truck earlier and it was kind of hot and we're waiting for it to cool off. I think it's just right now. So let's catch another fish. And we get to take a break and have ourselves a nice little drink. Oh, that's a fish. It's a good one. I don't know what kind of fish that is. It's a crappie! Guys, I'm getting really excited now. We just noticed that the water has dropped a good bit. And I think that's why they weren't biting as good at first whenever it got dark is because the water was changing. But now it's at a good level and it's actually a, a whole lot slower right here in front of us. And that's perfect for these crappie. They like the slow water. I mean, it was really moving fast a little bit. It was kind of, I mean, it was kind of alarming. I don't know if we're gonna get on them or not, but 
That is a really nice crappie, perfect eating sized. Throw them in the bucket. Now we get to have our brisk tea. Dead water dropped. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that's something big. What is that? Oh, 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 he broke my line. It's a, it's a white bass. That's a good white bass. I gotta somehow get my jig out of there. I want my jig back. And he absolutely, oh, they're jumping. Dude, it's about to go crazy out here, I think. These fish, the water has just gotten so perfect all of a sudden. Can I toss him back in there, get my jig tied back on, catch another one? Dude, come on. Ooh, baby. It's a crappie. I want y'all to see this if you can. Look at that. It's gone. Oh, I hooked myself. Here we go. Oh! Oh! We need like an almost busted counter. I think it's probably like six or seven. We ended it. Oh, it's a sauger. I knew they were all saugers down there. I think he's gonna be a little small to keep. He's a good medium though. I don't know. We kept one this big earlier. Probably gonna throw them back. I have high hopes that we can catch some bigger ones. We've got three. We have one good one, two kind of smediums. He would qualify as a slightly under smedium, but I think we can get three bigger ones. They're really biting good now. Send him back. There we go. Oh, it's a nice one. Oh, it's a crappie. Oh, I can't. I keep trying to crap and they keep coming off. Gotcha. He thumped it. Going in the bucket. That was a good bite right there, guys. That's a good one. There's just another good crappie. <gasps> Thank you. I'm thinking I've got a tie in your leader on that pole. I keep breaking them off. I got four pound test on that. You really need a heavier line when you're fishing around these rocks. That's another good slab. Casting downstream, kind of working it up with the current. Beautiful fish. We've got a whole, whole mess of them. We're not gonna fish out here a whole lot longer, but we've had an epic night. Hoping to catch a couple more good keeper saugers, but can't complain with these good slabs. Smoking that crappie magnet. Sauger. Another nice little baby sauger. I'm surprised we haven't caught more big ones tonight. We've caught a bunch of them this big, but we really want to be at least double that size. Oh, is that a fish? Oh, that's moving. Uh-oh, I think we got ourselves another big ugly. <laughs> this is big. I think it's a big drum. It feels big. Oh, please be something, please be something different. It didn't look like a drum just then. It's a drum, 100%. Come here, big guy. That's a big drum. That's a big drum. Oh yeah, look at that kicker right there. We lost a big drum earlier on the jig rod. Got a little bit of redemption. This new is probably pushing five pounds or so. I thought it was stuck on the bottom and then it started going. And I honestly thought it might've been something besides a drum, like a, like, a, like a flathead catfish or something. It just felt different, but it's a good drum. He ate that crappie magnet, gonna get him off the hook, cast back in there and see if we can get some more fish. I mean, the bite has just steadily picked up as we've been out here. A lot of times when I fish out here, it'll start to dwindle at about this time, but the water's perfect and these fish are munching. It's been a great time. That's a nice bite. What are you? Be a big sauger. I don't think he is, I think it's a white bass. You never know. Oh, it's another drum. Come on, man. Come on. Little drum, he had me fooled. He bit like a big crappie or a sauger and he started rolling around like a drum. The drum are fine, but at this point in the night, we've been out here for a while. I'm really looking for a couple more bigger sauger. We've got a, enough crappie. The saugers, that's what's keeping me going. Bite. 
busted him. How, why is there so many sagra over there? Do you know? They're right, all just like, is it like a mating ball? Hello, where's your girlfriend? I mean, every time. There's a mating ball of them over there. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, it's crazy to catch this many saugers. I mean, you could eat that. I mean, that's not a bad keeper size sauger, but it seems to be a little bit bigger. Dude, on the fall. Come on, how many saugers are over there? We're like not in the right spot. All the saugers are over there. It's like three in a row. Like they can't all just be over there this size. There's gotta be some good ones over there with them. Oh baby, oh baby. Don't be a drum. This might be a big sauger. It's, I don't know what this is. Come on. It's long, it's strong, it's a big sauger. I got braid, I got four pound line. No, 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 no. Yes, yes. Just go, look how big this one is. I just caught like 15 tiny saugers in a row. Let's go. Look at that thing. That is the fish that we are after. We've been out here, what time is it now? 10.56, we've been out here, we've spent some time out here below this dam. And um, this is our fourth sauger. We're two away from a limit, but that's the size that we want to keep. That is some serious good eating. And that one's pretty too, look at the colors. Look at the spots on her fins. Heck yeah, I knew that all those males couldn't be over there just by themselves. There had to have been a nice looking female hanging out there in the rocks too, and we got her. I bet there's more too. Heck yes, heck yeah, baby. Guys, I knew that that thing was a sauger. As soon as it bit, and as it was rolling around, it felt like it was a long fish. And then I got worried because I broke off some fish with that four pound line. I should probably have already changed it out for some eight pound, but they're biting it pretty good. And luckily we got this fish in. This is the fish of the night, I would say. We caught some big crappie, but I mean, this is what we came for. This is what we grinded all this time out here for is a sauger like this. And while this isn't the biggest sauger in the world, it's a good one. Very quality fish and they are so, so tasty. Like one of my favorites to eat. Um, but we're gonna throw them in the bucket and I think that we're actually going to wrap things up down here. I mean, this is all I was hoping for. We got it. Take a look at all these fish. Oh, oh look how big that crappie is. We got some good ones. Okay, that is respectable. That is nice. See, here's that sauger we just caught. That one there is pretty good. That one's pretty good. But look at this crappie. Look at these guys. I mean, that's a slab, guys. Slab crappie, thick saugers. What's not to love about that? Let's see what our total is at this point. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, oh, 14, 15, 16, 17 crappie and four saugers. I mean, if that's not the tastiest bucket of fish you've ever seen, then you ain't had sauger and crappie mixed together in a bucket because that is just a sight to see. Look at that. So we're we're two saugers away from a limit and we're 13 crappie from a limit. We might could go down there and grind it out, but I think that that's plenty of fish for us to take home and clean up for us to have tomorrow for lunch or for supper. But with that, we're gonna wrap things up. We're gonna get our stuff. We have a bunch of rods and gear down there we gotta go load up and we're gonna head back to the house. So we hope that y'all enjoyed this episode. I know that I had a blast. This is some of my favorite type of fishing to do. You know, I love the multi-species. When you do it at nighttime, it adds a whole nother element. When you're fishing on a big river like this where you could literally catch anything, that also adds a different element. And I encourage y'all to get out this spring, do some tail race fishing, do some night fishing, do some crappie fishing, do some sauger fishing, just get out and go fishing, guys. It is, it's the time of year to do it. 
and uh, you will more than likely have good results. So that's where I'm gonna leave y'all. Thank y'all for watching and we will see y'all on the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>